Welcome to the Seth Thibodeau Show, featuring the head coach of the Nickel State University baseball team, Seth Thibodeau. Today's program is presented by State Farm. Contact your local State Farm agent today and get to a better state. The Seth Thibodeau Show is also sponsored by Rouse's Supermarkets. Rouse's, you're either local or you're not. Good afternoon and welcome to the Seth Thibodeau Show presented by State Farm Insurance. I'm your host, Mike Wagenheim. Last we spoke, the Nichols Colonels were coming off an outstanding midweek performance in a victory at South Alabama and were about to head to Conway, Arkansas in an attempt to jumpstart their season in a three-game Southland series against Central Arkansas. We chat here with the head coach of the Colonels, Seth Thibodeau. Welcome to the program, as always. Thanks, Wags. Excited about getting this show on. Well, the Colonels headed into that uh, matchup with Central Arkansas on an eight-game Southland losing skid. You really needed to get things going. What was the game plan heading into the set against the Bears? Be aggressive, be the aggressor, and, and, and do what we can to control the outcome of the baseball game. And I felt like we had a pretty good plan going in, and, and uh, we, we had some good baseball there. It was a terrific series. We're going to take a long look at it here. We had a pretty good duel on Friday night at Bears Stadium. Nichols right-hander Mike Sook and UCA righty Caleb McClanahan now were scoreless until the bottom half of the fifth when UCA's Forrest Allday delivers a two-out double to left. Garrett Brown scores on the play all day. Terrific player at the top of the order. He's among the top ten national leaders in on-base percentage. The Colonels answer in the sixth with runners at the corners. Philip Lyons slices one by first. Matt Richard chugs in from third. Lyons would get nailed at second base here. The ball game is tied at one. Now, it didn't stay that way for long. Bottom six, Sook, who hadn't allowed a home run since opening day, serves up a gopher ball to Jonathan Davis, who finished the game a triple shy of the cycle. The Bears lead it two to one after that long ball from Davis. Now the very next batter here is Scott Zimmerly, and he cranks one to right field. This one would get over the fence, his first home run of the year. Same for Davis, and it's three to one, Central Arkansas. Baseball's just a funny game sometimes. We work our way into the seventh inning after this home run from Zimmerly, and Blake Marshall at the bat, he singles this center. That would chase in Justin Treese. UCA up four to one, Sook would last, just one more batter. He gives up 10 hits and five runs in six and two third innings. Ethan Harris would finish him with an RBI double to left. Marshall scores all the way from first. A half dozen extra base hits for the Bears. Central Arkansas up five to one. Looks like they have this thing wrapped up. But as usual, the Colonels find a way to make things interesting. In the eighth, a pair of infield hits before Leo Vargas' bouncer to third takes a tough hop. It's in the left. Mike Barba trots home, Richard racing around, he scores as well. Vargas ends up at second and it's a two-run ball game. McClanahan would exit after that. In comes righty Clint Green, he fans Lions before Brandon Jackson sack fly scores Vargas who had advanced to third on a wild pitch. Close play at the plate, but Clint Green retired all six colonels he faced. Nichols would come no closer, dropping Friday's opener by a five to four margin. Dug yourself a hole in this one and just too much to dig out of and Mike Sook uncharacteristically serving up a couple of home runs. Yeah he doesn't do that very often and, and he caught himself right there leaving a couple balls up with the wind blowing out and, and uh, they were able to get out to a four run lead and make it hard for us and, and but fortunately we were able to put some runs on the board and have a chance there at the end. I'd like to have seen us score a couple more. We had some opportunities and didn't quite get it done but that's a heck of a Friday night baseball game typical of our, our conference and, and we head into Saturday you know, neck and neck again, you know, feeling pretty good about trying to get that win on Saturday. You look at, at UCA up and down the order, they just don't seem to be any easy outs. No, they, he's done a pretty good job of putting that lineup together, and, and they got some good players. They do a fantastic job with on base percentage and, and, and just kind of passing it on to the next guy. There's always guys in, in scoring position. They do a great job of just getting on base. So uh, it was a little heat on our pitchers, and especially Corey Delane going into Saturday's game to be able to, you know, pound the zone. Well, game two on Saturday in front of a record crowd at Bears Stadium. The Colonels needed this one in the worst way. The combination of Corey DeLang, Brandon Jackson, and Jordan McCoy did the work on the hill, allowing just one run on five hits between them. In fact, the pen was perfect. 
The club needed just a little offensive contribution against reigning Southland pitcher of the week, Jeffrey Enloe. Top third, no score, bases empty, one out. And Cody Dufran cranks Enloe's offering over the field in left center. Dufran's third home run of the year, and that provided a little spark. A pair of hits follow, though Mike Barber caught at third trying to steal. So here's Leo Vargas facing Enloe, base hit to left. Matt Richard scores. Here uh, on this play here, Scott Zimmerly would deliver an RBI single for UCA in the third, but that was it. The Colonels needed just two runs to get the job done. Finally, after six, count them, six one-run defeats in conference play, Nichols comes out on the winning end of a close one. Two to one the final. Enloe pitched his second straight complete game, but the Colonels got it done. Philip Lyons made a couple of outstanding plays in the field. Brandon Jackson came on big in the seventh, inheriting two runners. He fell behind Zimmerly 3-0, but got him to ground out on a 3-2 pitch. That was the first home regulation loss all year for Central Arkansas. This just, it was a huge victory in a number of regards, oh, Coach. Yeah, everyone did something really small that ended up being really big. Like Philip Lyons' is a big play in the first inning. Uh, he hold, he lays out, makes a big play early with they have runners in scoring position, makes a big play there. I mean, are we going to play one-run games the rest of the year, Wags? It just seems like that's the way it's going to be. But I'm going to tell you right now, once we figure out how to win these one-run games consistently over and over again, that makes you a pretty good club. And, and it, it builds a lot of character, and, and, and I, fi- I knew this at the beginning of the season that a lot of our games were going to be tight, and I couldn't have predicted, you know, nine straight conference games with that are a one-run game, whether we win or lose them, but uh, that's just the way it's going to be, and, and we're going to get better because of it. Well, we had another one-run game. It's down to the rubber match. <laughs> Two quality starters go at it here. The Colonels, Taylor Bird, and the Bears, Bryce Biggerstaff. And Nichols steps on the gas in the first. With Matt Richard on third, Brandon Jackson doubles down the left field line. One of his two hits on the afternoon. Bird, though, would struggle early. He walks him loaded in the first before uncorking this wild pitch. Forrest all day scores, and we are square at one. Nichols punches right back in the second, two on with one gone, and Mike Barber really busted out of a slump in this series. He smacks a double to left, chasing in Tyler Duplantis. Seth Stevens goes from corner to corner, and the Colonels reclaim the lead. Barber had five hits on the weekend. Later that inning, the bases are loaded with one out for Leo Vargas. A ground ball here to short. Now, Barba is forced out at third on a nice play by the shortstop at Stevens scores. Bigger staff was gone after just two innings with Nichols up three to one. UCA gets one back in the bottom of the frame, an errant pickoff throw from Bird. Uh, but Justin Treese on third here. Chris Townsend scores him on the sack fly. Nichols' advantage is down to one. The Colonels then put up a crooked number on reliever Blake Clayton in the third. Cody Dufran clobbers a two out, two run double off the left field wall. Jackson and Duplantis come home. Five to two nickels. Clayton was pulled after just two thirds of an inning as the Bears went to the pen for his second time. Right hander Ethan McKenzie turned out to be the guy they were looking for. In the fourth, Philip Lyons registers a sack fly. Richard scores an unearned run, but McKenzie shut the door after that. He went the rest of the way, allowing just three more hits with no walks and four Ks. Bird here dealing in the fifth to Michael Marietta. Blake Marshall on third. He had advanced on a ball. Fly ball to right. Is it deep enough? Strong throw from Barba, but it's up the line. UCA closes within three. Bird was done after that inning. Kelby Langston pitches two scoreless frames into the eighth now. Mark Piciola working to Townsend. Base hit the left. Garrett Brown had reached on an error. Pinch runner Nick Rougeau scores the unearned run. Jordan McCoy stranded three in the eighth. The lead is still two in the ninth, but McCoy with all sorts of problems. Bases loaded walk here to Craig Kelly. We've got a one-run affair after Z- uh, Scott Zimmerly strikes out. Treese punches one to short right. Barba going all out, makes a diving catch, but Marietta tags, scoring the tying run. The next batter is Doug Vadalato, and a line drive hit here to center field. Ethan Harris on second, would try to score on the play. Matt Richard comes up firing, and it's just not in time. Central Arkansas scores three in the ninth, rallying for a 7-6 to six victory to take the series. This one, crushing. Yeah, that was a, that was frustrating. We had that game one. I didn't like how we, we didn't pitch and play defense at the right times. And, and Taylor walked a couple guys. And the only reason those guys were in the game 
uh, was because we walked some guys and we, we made a, an error here and an error there. And that is the only reason that game was even close when it was. And, and it just gave them a chance. And we've lost a couple of games like that this year. And, and we've got to be able to, to put teams away. And I felt like if we score a couple of runs in the sixth, seventh innings there, you probably put the game away and out of reach. And, and we didn't do that. And we didn't pitch it at the right times. And we kind of put it in cruise control. And that, that was a frustrating part. But you have to give Central Arkansas a lot of credit. They're a good baseball team. They've won 25, 26 games for a reason, and, and, and they know how to win at their park. Now, obviously, like you said earlier, they've only lost one regulation game there. So tough weekend, but boy, some great baseball played, and, and that's typical Southland Conference. you got to go on the road. You can expect things like that to happen, but I felt like we put ourselves in a, with a chance to win each and every game. Now, Matt Richard had gutted that one out through the weekend. He's been playing with a, a back injury that's really causing him problems. It goes back a few years now and uh, just gutted it out this weekend and had six hits and played a solid center field. It's, a, it's, it's amazing what a young man can do and you know it just lay, leaves his heart on the field every time he steps on the field. Uh, Matt you know every time I look out there I'm always worried that he's hurting and, and he looks at me and gives me a wink and lets me know he's okay you know would have to have a bulging disc in your back and to be able to play the way he does it's just it's, it's very inspirational for me and the rest of our players just to watch him when he steals bases with ease but then you know he has that little grimace at the end uh, I'm just re I'm really hoping that with a few things that uh, you know with the doctors this week that he can finish out his senior season uh, you know, healthy and, and be able to put a smile on his face every day he steps on the field because he is a, a, an inspiration to myself and my players. Six hits and three stolen bases, as you mentioned. We didn't know if he was going to play on Friday. He <laughs> says, I'm going on Friday. We figure, well, he needs a day off Saturday. Nope, I'm going out nope. there. Finally, Sunday rolls around. Got to get him out of the lineup, right. but he just refused to he come wouldn't, out. He wouldn't let it happen. He kept looking at me. He's like, Coach, I'm, I'm going to play today. I said, we'll see after BP. And then I walked out to BP to talk to him, and he literally didn't take BP that day. And uh, <laughs> so that he can save some swings for the game and has a great game at the plate. It's amazing. And, and the young man is just a battler and he's a warrior. He's, what, he's everything nickel state baseball is all about. Meanwhile, Mike Barba at the bottom of the order, he's been really struggling at the plate over yes. the, the previous two, three weeks and just in a, a total funk. For him to emerge the way he did out of that UCA series, that's got to be a huge confidence booster for him. It's huge for him. It's huge for our team because we're not the same team without Mike Barba. He's got to do one thing for us each and every game offensively to be a part of our offense and, and, and help our offense be successful. And you see that every game now that when he's on base, a lot of things happen. Whether he's hitting in the leadoff spot, the nine hole, the two hole, whatever it may be, he makes things happen around him because of his speed and just for whatever reason, uh, you know, guys can hit behind him because they're worried about him stealing bags when he's on the bases. So it's important. He's an important part of our offense and he has worked really hard to get out of that funk he was in for a couple of weeks and and uh, he's done some big things, including, you know, against uh, our latest opponent that we'll talk about here soon. Richard would get the night off on Tuesday, and Barba moved into the leadoff spot as the Colonels hosted Louisiana Lafayette on Tuesday night. The Raging Cajuns with a potent offense. Six of their starters were batting 319 or better on the season. They came into this one at 24 and 11. Nichols gave them a fight in late February before ULL pulled away with a big eighth inning. Lefty freshman Grant Bourne got the start again for the Colonels. He was solid against the Cajuns last time around, giving up one run in five innings. Not too shabby in this one either. Top of the first, a 1-2-3 frame. He gets Ryan Leonards to chase the breaking ball, one of Bourne's five strikeouts. Now his counterpart was Cody Smith, the Cajun lefty, taking over as a midweek starter due to injury. This would be just his second start of the season, though he did have a solid long relief outing against Tulane recently. In the bottom of the second, Smith punches out Tyler Duplantis. Smith racked up six Ks. He walked just one. This was a, just a solid midweek duel between these two left-handers. Top of the third, two hits and a wild pitch to start the inning, and Dex Kerstad chops one into no man's land on the right side of the infield. Logan Preston scores from third, Kerstad with three hits on the evening. Two batters later, Ryan Leonards loops it into right, chasing in Sam Carrier. Nichols down 2 0. Those were the only two runs, though, surrendered by Bourne in six innings of work. He yielded five hits. Now, the Yeti comes out and gets everyone going here before the Colonels come to bat in the fifth. And the Yeti, he never disappoints. Base is loaded for the Colonels, two outs for Leo Vargas. He gets through to the shortstop Blake Trahan. Trahan has no play. Phillip Lyons comes across to make it a 2-1 ball game. Vargas registered three hits. The Colonels left him loaded, though. Top of the eighth after a Trahan sack fly makes it 3-1 Cajuns. Preston with a chance to drive in another, but Barba saves the day. He also had a diving catch in the ninth, and those were big. Home half of the eighth. 
Vargas on second with two outs. Court Cockrell dealing to Keith Cormier. Gone. First home run of the year for Keith. And this contest is all tied up at three. We go to the bottom of the ninth. Corkrell retire the first two batters before Nichols puts runners at first and second. So ULL head coach Tony Robichaux would go to their closer, Matt Hicks. He comes on to face Barba in an attempt here to force extra innings. Here we go. Hicks and Barba. And Mike leads one through the left side. Pinch runner Cole Wilson waved in. The throw from the left fielder, Leonard's. Uh, flies off into the night here, and Nichols rallies for a 4-3 to three victory. Another one-run ball game. The Colonels have as many wins against the Sun Belt this year as you do against the South. And if you can only turn that midweek magic into something special on the weekend as well, the Colonels would be in fine positioning for the postseason. It's always good to see a little mini dog pile at the end of a Absolutely. ball game. Absolutely. I love when our guys are excited like that. They, they, they deserve that. And that was a good baseball game last night. Great crowd. Good, good environment. We made some big plays. They made some big plays. Uh, it was a fantastic college baseball game last night in a great environment. And to see Mike Barber play the way he did last night, making plays like that in the outfield was fantastic. But he did some big things. Uh, you know, I, I just – everyone knew – after Keith hit the home run, everyone knew it was, it, we were going to win the baseball game. There was never panic. There was excitement. They wanted it, and they were fired up about it. And, and uh, I want our guys to play loose and energized like that on the weekends because we can be a very good baseball team when we play that way. It's four straight Tuesday night wins, and against quality competition. Yeah. Tulane, South Alabama, you all laugh. Yeah, those, those clubs are pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> Last I checked, they're you know, all around the 25-win mark. So. Uh, no, UL Lafayette, South Alabama on back-to-back -back Tuesday nights. Really good pitching performances. If you think about it, we've held two, two of the best hitting teams in the Sun Belt Conference and some of the best offensive teams in the country. Uh, one run last Tuesday and, and three runs last night. So, uh, you know, we, we're pitching it well at that point, but, you know, we're getting the big hit at the right time. And, and uh, Vargas, you know, going three for four there, getting a big run in. Cormier's big home run was so huge. And then Mike Barba, of course, just you know, just getting it done there at the end. That was fun to watch. Uh, we've got much more coming up on the Seth Thibodeau Show presented by State Farm Insurance. Stay with us. We're back in a moment. Does State Farm let me bundle auto, home, and life to save money? Sure. We practically invented bundling. And it all stays with State Farm. So my policies don't go to some bundling center. <laughs> that ships them off to some bundle factory. I'm dealing with you and not some bungling, bustling bundle builders. Who have you been working with? Stay with the company you trust. Bundle and save with your local State Farm agent. At Rouse's, we love football. We love the players, we love the fans, and you know we love the food. So whether it's high school, college, or pros, if there's a game, we're tailgating. You can tackle your tailgate, too, with one stop by Rouse. Get Rouse's ready to grill meat, chicken, and pork. Or pick up Rouse's ready to serve tailgate specials. Everything is made fresh for the game, and you know it's all good. So get the home field advantage every time you shop. Shop local. Shop Rouse's. Now that's tailgating. Nickel State University is taking education on the road, the information superhighway. If you are unable to come to campus, we are bringing the campus to you. Study at home and graduate quicker with Nichols Online. No more going to class around the school's schedule. Go to class online around your schedule. All of your courses are taught by qualified Nichols State University professors who are experts in their fields. To take that step, go to nichols.edu slash Nichols Online or email Nichols Online at nichols.edu. We're back with you on the Seth Thibodeau Show presented by State Farm Insurance. There's so much going on around campus right now. It's tough to keep track of it all. Pamela Johnson helps us out. As one Colonel program wrapped up its regular season on a high note and prepares for the Southland Conference Championship, another continues to compete for its spot in the postseason. Meanwhile, the football team is getting themselves back in shape as they enter the second week of spring practice. Plus, it was all fun for the soccer team as it faced its easiest opponent of the season. On Saturday, the Nickel State University men's tennis team closed out its regular season with a 7-love victory against Lamar at the Colonel Tennis Complex, clinching their second straight appearance in the Southland Conference Tournament. Nickel started out strong with a sweep in doubles and claimed all six singles matches in straight sets, giving seniors Dmitry Kozinov, Roy Knight, and Damian Despotovsky a memorable send-off in their final appearance in Thibodeau. 
The Colonels improved to 8-10 and 10 overall and 3-2 and two in conference. It was a good way to finish the season for the guys. Um, I mean, we had three seniors graduating and, and leaving us. It's always, it's, it's mixed emotions, you know, because for them it's their last match. And it was kind of a sad day to see him playing, but it's nice to see him finish on a high note. Next week, the club travels to Beaumont, Texas to compete in the Southland Championship. Their first round opponent has yet to be determined. The softball team played host to Central Arkansas this past weekend in a critical Southland Conference series, coming away with a split of Saturday's doubleheader. The Sugar Bears claimed the first game one to nothing, scoring an unearned run in the top of the seventh as Hannah Haydell went pitch for pitch against the Southland's top hurler, Kelsey Armstrong. In game two, Nichols looked to be headed towards its second shutout loss of the day, but they scored five runs in the bottom of the six, highlighted by a three-run bomb from Brittany Marset. The Colonels won 5-3. The third game scheduled for Sunday was canceled due to unplayable conditions following heavy rains from the night before and will not be made up. We pulled out a good win after losing the first game, and we really battled and came back in the last inning, which shows a lot about us that we keep uh, going strong the whole game and that we definitely got better at finishing games. Nichols is currently in fifth place with a record of 9-8 and eight in conference and 19-21 and 21 overall. The team travels to Huntsville, Texas for a weekend series against Sam Houston who currently sits in third. The Nichols football program put on their pads for the first time on Monday as spring practice heated up. Their goal is to focus more on strength and conditioning because as a team they need to get stronger. Well, we just completed practice number five, and it was in full pads for the first time, so there's a lot more contact, and, uh, you know, I was pleased with what I saw, a lot of very good competition. It feels good to be back with the guys, you know, just getting that bonding, that team bonding, and actually, you can actually show some more aggression. Fans are invited to watch the team scrimmage this Saturday at 9.30 a.m. The women's soccer team hosted their third annual faculty staff spring game at the Colonel Soccer Complex last Thursday. Although they put up a good fight, the faculty and staff fell to the Colonels one to nothing. It was all in good spirits though, as the main reason behind the event was to strengthen the bond between students and faculty in a fun atmosphere. I think this is a great program. They started it, as I said, two years ago. This is the third year I've played. And events like this are really fun. I, I think it's, it's good for the players. It gives them something fun to do rather than just a regular old boring practice. It allows the faculty to get out and get some much needed exercise, but it, it gets a, ch a chance to socialize with students away from the classroom. And I think it's important for us as faculty, and I think the students enjoy it as well. I think it's a good idea just to get the faculty out here and just them have a, like, them have a way to come out and enjoy soccer the way that we do. For the Set Thibodeau Show, I'm Pamela Johnson. Thanks a lot, Pamela. We actually saw uh, Byron Cobb uh, interview there on the football field. Byron, also a member of the Colonel baseball team, sitting out this year after uh, getting injured early in the season. Up next on the Set Thibodeau Show, presented by State Farm Insurance, we take a look ahead to the Colonel's upcoming series with McNeese State. That and more on the way. Does State Farm let me bundle auto, home, and life to save money? Sure. We practically invented bundling. And it all stays with State Farm. So my policies don't go to some bundling center. <laughs> That ships them off to some bundle factory. I'm dealing with you and not some bungling, bustling bundle builders. Who have you been working with? Stay with the company you trust. Bundle and save with your local State Farm agent. At Rouse's, we love football. We love the players. We love the fans. And you know we love the food. So whether it's high school, college, or pros, if there's a game, we're tailgating. You can tackle your tailgate, too, with one stop by Rouse's. Get Rouse's ready to grill meat, chicken, and pork. Or pick up Rouse's ready to serve tailgate specials. Everything is made fresh for the game. And you know it's all good. So get the home field advantage every time you shop. Shop local. Shop Rouse's. Now that's tailgating. Nickel State University is taking education on the road, the information superhighway. If you are unable to come to campus, we are bringing the campus to you. Study at home and graduate quicker with Nichols Online. No more going to class around the school's schedule. Go to class online around your schedule. All of your courses are taught by qualified Nichols State University professors who are experts in their fields. To take that step, go to nichols.edu slash nicholsonline or email nicholsonline at nichols.edu. 
Back with you on the Seth Thibodeau Show, presented by State Farm Insurance. Folks, we encourage you to check out our social media outlets, facebook.com slash gocolonels and twitter.com slash colonel sports. We'll always have the latest information you need to follow your favorite colonel club right there on our social media outlets. With you today with head coach Seth Thibodeau here on the Seth Thibodeau Show, presented by State Farm Insurance. Got a big weekend set coming up against McNeese State here at home. Right now you're four games out of eighth place at top eight and make it 15 conference games left. You got time, but not a whole lot of it. Got to get it done this weekend. We're just going to take care of our business on Friday night. That's all that matters. And and, uh, we are excited about playing at home against a great opponent from the in-state. Uh, we should have a great weekend, great weather. We're really motivated and, and excited about this Friday night. What can you tell us about the Cowboys? Well, I know the Cowboys can pitch it a little bit. They've been pitching well, and then they got a couple guys in their lineup with that are physical and athletic. So, uh, typical Southland Conference team. There's not a whole lot of difference each and every weekend when you see a step on the field. So, I know they're well. Coach Terry Burroughs does a great job there, but we are excited about and very motivated for that opportunity. It's an in-state opponent, and it's a conference opponent, and our guys are ready to rock and roll. They're ready to get this thing uh, rolling in conference. We're going to see a few one-run games? Uh, you know, I'd really like to see a separation in score and, and us, you know, the good guys on the higher end. But, uh, <laughs> you know, you can't predict it, but I guarantee you're going to see a huge change. The game will even itself out here in the next few weeks. With the opening game against McNeese coming up tomorrow night, what's the latest status on Matt Richard? Is he going to be able to give it a go? Matt should be able to give it a go. He's been moving around a little bit today, and, and, and after his uh, little surgical procedure on, mon- on Monday, it's about a three- to four-day deal, and so you should see a, a healthy Matt Richard, a full-speed Matt Richard on Saturday for sure, but he should be able to go on Friday and tomorrow as well. The uh, Colonels coming into this one again, uh, having to catch the Southland Pack. Things are stacked up right now at the top. You got a four-way tie for first mm-hmm. and a four-way tie for fifth, and the Colonels in Northwestern State trying to catch those teams. The good news is, most of those teams you need to catch, you still got on the schedule sure, here. Sure, we got we control our own destiny, and really and truly, if we look too far ahead, though, we're going to drown ourselves. We need to worry about taking care of McNeese this weekend on Friday night, and we can control that. We can't control what happens on Saturday and Sunday right now. All we can do is prepare ourselves for Friday night, and that's what we're going to do, and we're going to keep it simple-minded and do what we can to, to, with, with, uh, with what we're dealt and, and control the controllables, and uh, we're, we're very motivated about Friday night, I can tell you that. Speaking about Friday night, you got some things going on in the community. Huge, as well. very um, neat deal we have. We're going to wear blue helmets and blue wristbands in honor of uh, prostate cancer awareness and try to l- help raise a little uh, money for the Terrebonne General Medical Center and their cancer uh, research. Uh, it's all coming in, and, and they're coming over on, on Friday night, and they're going to be out with the bus, and they're doing free screenings, and it's really neat. It's something that we're excited about to help them raise money, but also help promote awareness in the area, and, and I, I'm excited about it. You know, and then we go from that on Friday night. On Saturday, Dr. J. Robert Field, the, the uh, business school, is coming out with all of, of all the business school professors, and they're going to tailgate and cook for our guys. I mean, that is a really neat deal, and we're I'm really excited that they have chosen to do that, and our players are going to really enjoy that as well. Looking forward to it. Folks, it's time to announce our Rouse's Student Athlete of the Week, sponsored by Rouse's Supermarkets. You're either local or you're not. Rouse's Supermarkets are local, with their roots established in Thibodeau in 1923. Trust Rouse's for great food and great values. Louisiana's best can be found at your local Rouse's or at Rouse's.com. Last week's winner, Jamie Springer, claimed yet another Javelin gold medal, her fourth in five meets at the Ole Miss Invitational on Saturday, part of an outstanding meet for the Colonels. But this week, the honors go to Dmitry Kazianov of the men's tennis team. The senior won all four of his matches to help catapult Nichols into the Southland Tournament. He won in straight sets against Corpus Christi and Lamar at number two singles while teaming with Jeffrey Noblecourt for a pair of victories at number two doubles. Congratulations to Dimitri and the Colonel men's tennis team. Coach, we've got about 30 seconds left. Fans coming out this weekend, what should they expect? Expect a, a hard-fought Southland Conference Series. You know, McNeese, and, and when we tangle with, the, with McNeese, it's always a war, it's always a battle, and it's going to be an exciting one. They need some wins, but we need to protect our house and, and take care of our business at the right time. And, and uh, you know, what a neat weekend, though, with all that's going on. I'm excited about it. Friday at 6.30, Saturday at 2, and Sunday at 1, the Colonels and the Cowboys here from Thibodeau. We'll see you out at Didier Field. Take care. Today's show has been presented by State Farm. Contact your local State Farm agent today and get to a better state. This show has also been sponsored by Rouse's Supermarkets, 
Rouse's. You're either local or you're not. This has been a presentation of the Colonel Sports Network. Network.